There's a plethora of different controllers available for the Nintendo Switch. When it first launched, our only options were the infamous Joy-Cons and Nintendo's official Pro Controller. Seven years later, now the Nintendo Switch has a controller option for just about anybody. Today I'm going to be taking a look at Binbox's latest offering, the Ultra Pro Controller Hall Effect Edition. Before I get into the nitty gritty, I just want to disclaim that this controller was sent in to me for a review. That said, my opinions are completely my own, as if I went out and purchased this with my own money. So with that out of the way, let's open this bad boy up. Inside the box, you're greeted by this white with black offset controller. I gotta say, it's got a nice weight to it. It's not overly heavy, but it's also not too lightweight or cheap feeling. It definitely feels good in the hands. The actual layout of the controller itself is the same as last year's model, however the white coloring identifies it as being the Hall Effect Edition. More on that later. The box contains four additional joysticks, as well as a replacement D-pad, to mix and match your play style. A USB-C charging cable, and a 2.4 GHz USB receiver, for those who would rather not use Bluetooth when connected to PC. First things first, let's take a look at the actual controller itself. As I mentioned earlier, the white coloring is new to the Bimbok Ultra Pro, and identifies the controller as having Hall Effect joysticks. Hall Effect sensors use magnets to calculate joystick movement, versus the traditional joystick which uses physical moving parts. In layman's terms, this means that the joysticks won't drift, like the Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons or the PS5 DualSense. In addition to the normal face buttons of a Switch controller, the Ultra Pro controller has an additional button to toggle the controller's eight different color options. You can also adjust the brightness by pressing the light button twice in a row. Doing this three times will turn off the lights entirely. On the bottom section you'll see the SWID switch and a sync button. The SWID switch allows you to swap between different platforms, including Switch, Windows PCs, Android, and Mac OS. The back side is where things start to get interesting, because there's a lot of additions. There's a 6-axis assist switch that enables motion controls, a no dead zone switch that removes the dead zone in the center area of the joysticks, and a trigger key sensitivity switch, which when turned on, causes the L2 and R2 triggers to enter a higher sensitivity mode. There's a vibration button, which lets you adjust the rumble by three levels of intensity, and a turbo button, which allows any of the controller's face buttons or triggers to have turbo functionality of up to 12 presses per second. This can be activated by just holding the T button, followed by the button of choice. Holding the turbo button down for three seconds will disable all turbo functionality on any of the face buttons. Most notable are the additional L4 and R4 triggers that have been added to the top, and the R5 and L5 paddles that have been added to the back. Programming them is as simple as holding the M button and the button of choice, waiting for the vibration, and pressing the button or buttons you'd like mapped, followed by the M button again. Alright, enough show and tell. Let's get this guy sunk up to the Nintendo Switch. The easiest way to sync the controller is while the Switch is docked. Simply plug the controller into the docked Switch via a USB-C cable and press the home button. Once the controller is sunk up, disconnect the cable, press the home button, and boom, you're good to go. Now if you're using a Switch Lite or you're playing your Switch in handheld mode, you're not going to be able to do this. In that case, you'll need to enter the change grip order setting on the Switch menu and press and hold the sync button for a couple of seconds, followed by pressing L and R. So now that I've discussed its features, ultimately it comes down to how it performs. How does it feel? How does it actually respond to inputs? Well, I put a lot of time into this controller and I've also played a variety of different games. One of the first games I wanted to try was some Super Mario 64, as this is a classic I'm very used to controlling. Running around and jumping felt as smooth as a 28-year-old Nintendo 64 game really can. While I still prefer to use a GameCube controller for this game specifically, switching to a more button combo heavy title, like Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, was also a great experience. The controller's buttons are clicky, which feels very similar to a mouse click. Initially I was a bit mixed, but I grew to really like the tactile feel that the click produces, and found button responses to be very accurate. I was also very curious to see how the Hall Effect sensors would perform in a first person game. The controller's default dead zone feels minimal, resulting in first person titles like Metroid Prime feeling very smooth. Enabling the no dead zone switch results in a massive increase in both stick's sensitivity. This would probably be my preferred way to play anything in first person, as it opens up the range of movement and results in much smoother feeling gameplay. Triggers are fast and responsive, especially with the trigger key sensitivity switch enabled. Now one of the areas a lot of third party controllers lack is the D-pad. Many I've tried over the years just fail to be as responsive or as accurate as the official Switch Pro controller. 
Thinbox controller itself features a faceted design reminiscent to that of Xbox's controllers. That said, the replacement D-pad features a more traditional design. Fortunately, unlike many of Xbox's controllers, the D-pad is very responsive. During my play sessions of Tetris 99, the controller didn't register any false movement or input incorrect diagonals. This is very important for a game like Tetris, where one false move could be the end of everything. So overall, what do I think? Well, I'm beyond impressed. I went into this controller thinking, there's no way I'll love it, and after using it for a month straight as my main controller, I have to say I was wrong. My major complaints with the controller are honestly subjective. For starters, I'm really not a fan of rubberized grips. While they currently feel very nice and add a premium feel to the controller, I worry about longevity. The Xbox Elite Series 2 controller features a very similar grip. However, my less than five year old controller is beginning to show its age. The rubberized grips began splitting from the controller and are starting to feel a bit sticky. I take very good care of my controllers, but this is something I couldn't avoid since it happened in storage. I'm just concerned that the rubberized grips are going to deteriorate over time, as well as the coating on the front face of the controller. I'm just afraid that over time this rubberized matte texture that's on the face of the controller is going to eventually deteriorate into a gummy sticky mess. That said, everything else on the controller feels very sound. The buttons and triggers are accurate and quick to respond, the analog sticks feel as smooth as butter, and present little to no dead zone. The additional mappable triggers and paddles are very easy to map and incredibly useful to use. Overall, I think the Binbok Ultra Pro Controller Hall Effect Edition is one of the best third-party options available on the Nintendo Switch. The fact that the controller has mappable buttons, compatibility with multiple devices, and actually feels great to use makes it very hard not to recommend. If you're in the market for a new Switch controller and you want something that feels premium, has premium features, but won't break the bank, the Bimbok Ultra Pro Controller Hall Effect Edition's for you. Hey, thanks for making it this far. I know it's been a while since I've posted a new video, so hopefully you guys like this. If you did, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel, and please share with your buddies. If you want more Game Frank goodness, check out either of these videos. Until next time, peace.